Once a fundamental part of the wrestling industry, managers have sadly fallen out of fashion within the sport in recent years. That's a shame. Managers usually were able to give a talent that extra something. If a wrestler lacked the necessary charisma or interview skills, having that manager at ringside could add that extra bit of drama needed to make a good match great. But this show isn't lamenting the loss of the once great managers. Rather, it's a celebration of the men who were the best of the best at what they did. As determined by you, the fans, and discussed and debated by the wrestlers themselves, let's go now to the countdown of wrestling's most awesome manager. Why did the managers go away? That's, that's an incredible question that to this day, to this day, I still wonder. Um, I think that as time went on, the performer, the wrestler, started becoming more um, interview savvy and able to do what the manager did. Um, I also uh, think that some of the companies probably said, hey, we got a payroll here. We're paying this guy to manage this guy, to talk for this guy, when this guy can really talk. So why are we doing this? I miss the managerial days. I miss the color that the managers brought and the controversy that they brought to the table. Oh, great manager has to be selfless. By selfless, I mean he has to know that the singles wrestler or the tag team wrestler that he's managing, or even the whole stable of wrestlers he's managing, are the number one priority to get over. And he's an instrument to get those individuals or tag teams or groups over. Once a manager realizes that, and I was a manager for a while with Right to Censor, I realized that the other members of the group needed to get over, and therefore I would get over along with them. Quality as a great manager is not putting all the heat on yourself, helping your talent. It's, it's not about you. I mean, I mean, you, you can help, not hinder. Number five may surprise some people, but during the time that managers were falling by the wayside, this guy kept the tradition alive just about as good as anyone. Your number five choice for wrestling's most awesome manager is the sinister minister, James Mitchell. Huh. Who the hell is James Mitchell? Oh, he should be higher than that. James Mitchell should be a lot higher than number five. He shouldn't even. He shouldn't even been number. He shouldn't even been in the, the top twenty, because his gimmick sucked. I'm cool with him at number five. All time. Who's James Mitchell? We're talking about Vanden Balls, right? Okay. <laughs> I don't. know. And he's a good friend of mine. I don't know about putting him in the. T I mean, what? How, what you know, how many people did you ask this to? Is this all ECW fans? What, I mean, what's the plus or minus ratio on your, uh, on your Gallup poll here? Okay. Uh, interesting. Uh, he had, um, I'd call more of a uh, condensed area that he worked in. You know, he, he was not uh, uh, a hell of a karaoke singer, by the way. I think he had the potential to be a great manager if he just would have came in about 15 years earlier. Because he just had that whole dark side that Kevin Sullivan was sort of all about uh, and, and Kevin sort of made famous. Um, but his was really unique and sort of vampirous. So um, I don't think you've ever really got a chance to see if he would have been top five. But, uh, you know, there, I have to see your other four before I mention that. Don't get me wrong. Uh, James Mitchell is an excellent manager. Uh, I love this stuff in Smoky Mountain. You know, I, I stole one of his lines. You know, I'd rather go bobbing for apples. Uh, in a colostomy bag. I stole that line from James Mitchell. He's a great wordsmanship, but of all time. I, I am a fan of James Mitchell. Um, of all time, I'm not sure if he's in top five of all time, though. Number five? Are you kidding me? Okay, if he's the number five manager of all time, and I'm a manager, and I really didn't even remember who he was, I tend to disagree with that. He had his nose so far up Paulie's ass until it was ridiculous. He played that. All the thing he was missing was some paint on his face and some white lips, and then he started doing the soft shoe and said, man, man. That gimmick sucked, but he played the game. That's the only reason he was there. And he played that old ass-kissing game, and he was the one that almost blew his fingers off. Well, he said he blew his fingers off in, on the show we did in ECW. So he had something in his hand, and it exploded. 
in the locker room. And he ended up going to the emergency room. And he kept saying that his fingers was missing. And he showed up the next week, they had reattached his fingers, and he had a little scar on the side. I'm like, boy, please. Great little uh, goatee there. Um, and really, you know, good at what he did. Um, so interesting that he's number five. He was different, you know. He's creepy. You know, I always thought, I mean, I thought he was, like, for somebody like Abyss that doesn't talk at all, you know, I thought, you know, he was like a modern-day Paul Bear almost. You know, but he was, you know, he was good. He kind of had that little bit of a Jack Nicholson kind of thing going. That guy can talk. You believe the gimmick, even though it's so outrageous. I mean, he's the devil. It's so outrageous. But he got Abyss over. He got people over in WCW, even with ridiculous gimmicks like Mortis. Uh, he can talk. He can pull you in, and he can make you believe Every word that he's saying is true. I liked the the sinister minister deal. I thought he it was it was a it was a neat throwback to like uh, you know a little bit of some old school type uh, heel manager shit. Yeah, but Mitchell, great man, knew he he lived his devil gimmick. He is the devil. Sinister, great, great a uh, a, a real pro that really got into the character and understood the psychology of it. I mean, he's a guy that you can actually see as a character actor. You know, I think that he was, he was, he was talented. I mean, he, he, he never fucked shit up. He never, you know, he was, he was, he was good. He was a good manager. The fans have a shallow uh, knowledge of, 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 probably, of, what, of what's out there or what was out there. I love Jim. Excellent talker. Top five. Once a fundamental part of the wrestling industry, managers have sadly fallen out of fashion within the sport in recent years. That's a shame. Managers usually were able to give a talent that extra something. If a wrestler lacked the necessary charisma or interview skills, having that manager at ringside could add that extra bit of drama needed to make a good match great. But this show isn't lamenting the loss of the once great managers. Rather, it's a celebration of the men who were the best of the best at what they did. As determined by you, the fans, and discussed and debated by the wrestlers themselves, let's go now to the countdown of wrestling's most awesome manager. Why did the managers go away? That's, that's an incredible question that to this day, to this day, I still wonder. Um, I think that as time went on, the performer, the wrestler, started becoming more um, interview savvy and able to do what the manager did. Um, I also uh, think that some of the companies probably said, hey, we got a payroll here. We're paying this guy to manage this guy, to talk for this guy, when this guy can really talk. So why are we doing this? I miss the managerial days. I miss the color that the managers brought and the controversy that they brought to the table. Oh, great manager has to be selfless. By selfless I mean he has to know that the singles wrestler or the tag team wrestler that he's managing or even the whole stable of wrestlers he's managing are the number one priority to get over and he's an instrument to get those individuals or tag teams or groups over. Once a manager realizes that, and I was a manager for a while with Right to Censor, I realized that the other members of the group needed to get over and therefore I would get over along with them. Kawhi is a great manager is not putting all the heat on yourself, helping your talent. It's, it's not about you. I mean, I mean, you, you can help, not hinder. Number five may surprise some people, but during the time that managers were falling by the wayside, this guy kept the tradition alive just about as good as anyone. Your number five choice for wrestling's most awesome manager is the Sinister Minister. James Mitchell.